Hello YouTube and welcome to my first big hardware review video. Today we will be taking a comprehensive look at the Intel Broadwell 5775C. Let's start off with the basic specifications of the CPU. It's got an LGA 1150 socket. It works in your typical Z97 motherboards. It's got four cores with eight threads. Its base clock speed is 3.3 gigahertz. It'll turbo up to 3.7 gigahertz and has a TDP of 65 watts. It seems like everyone has a 4690K or a 4790K or a 4770K. And me being the rebel that I am was fascinated by the 5775C. Not quite as overclockable as Devil's Canyon, but it has an ace in the hole. A 128 meg level 4 cache that would be used for the integrated graphics. When you disable the CPU graphics multi-display in the BIOS, at least according to reviews I've read already, the CPU is able to utilize the cache for normal operations. A handful of reviewers have claimed that the cache is responsible for higher minimum frame rates in games when paired with a dedicated GPU. There was one problem though. This CPU was launched in the second quarter of 2015, but the availability was extremely low. Only recently has a big shipment appeared on Newegg and Amazon and the usual spots in the United States. As soon as I saw that, I jumped on it and had it come overnight. As soon as it got here, I popped out my 4790S and put in the 5775C and my Asus Z97A motherboard clamped down the Corsair HADI GT all-in-one cooler, and got to testing. I had some initial issues getting my previous settings to work. I, I forgot to reset the BIOS. That was just a rookie mistake. But once I managed to get nice settings going in the UEFI, I was off to the races. I loaded up IDA64 and ran the usual things in there, but everything seemed to be checking out. 3D Mark got faster physics marks than my 4790S, which I expected. After I got baselines at stock speeds, I decided to see how hard I could push the CPU. After a whole bunch of tweaking in the UEFI, I was able to get a stable 4.3 GHz with a seemingly high 1.375 volts to the core. I'm going to quickly revisit what I meant by seemingly okay in the benchmarking. I have had issues with this motherboard before when I had the 4790S installed, mainly with RAM. This issue cropped up yet again. I was able to get the XMP profile of 1.65 volts and 1200 MHz, but I wasn't comfortable with that for the long term. Lots of restarting and panicking later, I dropped it down to 666 MHz at 1.50 volts. Scores of the benchmarks and other details will have to wait for some other things to arrive in the mail. During all that overclocking, I decided to look into some things. On Intel's website, they list three motherboards as fully compatible. The ECSZ 97 pk Micro ATX board, the ECSZ 97 Machine ATX board, and the ECSZ 97 i Drone Mini ITX board. Now I know this list Intel provides isn't totally defined, but then I looked at the 4790K compatibility list. There are hundreds of boards listed as compatible. Even though ASUS lists the 5775C and my previous 4790S as compatible for the Z97A, I want to give this processor all the things it asks for in life. A good home, one of those listed boards, healthy food, the DDR3L 1333 or 1600 at 1.5 volts. In the next video, I'll be doing a build vlog of the Broadwell Bestwell build. New case, new motherboard, nice new memory up to 32 gigabytes, and my old GPU at a 390X. So be patient while I form my full opinion on this processor. But in the meantime, I'm happy I'm beating stock Skylakes and stock 4790Ks with this thing at matching clocks.
Thanks for watching.